Is yeah. this something that you yeah. would invest in or is that a no for you, dog? I, 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 well, Randy Jackson, it's <laughs> not necessarily a no for me, dog. <laughs> Podcast be <laughs> forgot and ever brought to mind. Should old podcast be forgot and the days of old Lang Syne. And that's wow. how we kick off the final promo upfront podcast of 2023, episode number 182 for Keeping Score at Home. I am one of your hosts, Bill Petrie. With me as always, let's call him the national accounts manager of the new year, the one and only Kirby Hossaman. Kirby! How the hell are you? Happy New Year, brother. Oh, thanks, man. Happy New Year to you. I'm doing pretty well right in that midst of the the uh, purgatory that is the week uh, between Christmas and New Year's. I'm um, trying, to, trying to do planning and stuff like that. But then there's the occasional client that actually wants to work on something, which is kind of annoying because, you know, the, the reality of it is, is if they need something this week, they need something urgently. Right. They right. need something invoice. Right. They need something, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to trying to wade through this week and get ready for the new year. How are you, bud? I'm good. Uh, took some time off this week. Ended up working a little bit. You really can't always take as much time off as you like. Whoa, right. I hit my microphone. Uh, but it's been nice. It's been relaxing and uh, getting ready for the new year. And it got me got me to thinking, Kirby, as things okay. often do. Yeah. We're about to embark on trade show season, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the beginning of the year generally represents in the promotional products industry. And it's an exciting time for a variety of reasons. But I want you to guess, do you know what I'm most excited about, Kirby? Uh, your shoe collection? <laughs> Thank good guess. <laughs> I'm not that's not the thing I'm most excited about. Oh, but okay, I, okay. I do love I do love myself some shoes. Yeah, I, I I had a feeling that you did. I you got me then if it's not the shoe collection. Okay. Well, like I said, once again, Kirby, you're incorrect. The answer is really obvious. Uh, I'm excited to see the good people over at Logo Mass because mm -hmm. in 2024, they are celebrating 20 years in business. And if you wow. recall, they recently did a gorgeous rebrand, added a mascot in Lenny the Lizard, and introduced a fresh tagline, uh, stand out where others fit in. And I'm pumped to see their wide range of indoor, outdoor, and point of purchase mats that help brands communicate a message. They're bright. They're bold, they're durable, and made in the USA. Kirby, I know you'll be visiting them if you go to ASI Orlando, they're at booth 921. And if you go to PPI Expo, they're at booth 2333. But I know you'll go see them. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we, I get to see the products that they they represent and the color, as you have mentioned, the, the amazingness of the products every day in my lobby. We, you know, when yeah. we, when we um, kind of dove into the idea of selling those, we said, you know, we need to... Um, we need to have them. We need to have them in our yeah. hands. And I, you know, A, you should go see them, but B, I highly recommend doing a self promo because then you really get to show the quality. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Kirby, even if it's not physically, but I'm right there with you mentally for sure. If you're heading to a trade show this January, make plans to stop by Logo Mats, uh, their booth, to see the creatively designed and expertly built mats that are made right here in the USA. That's right. And they're extremely uh, effective at capturing the attention of your target audience. So if you're heading to ASI Orlando, you can see the crew over at booth 921. And if you're going to be in Las Vegas for PPAI Expo, you can visit Miles Wadworth and his entire team at booth 2333. Logo Mats, they're the company you trust and now has a lizard that you love. All right, Kirby, episode 182. We're creeping up on 470 podcasts. Um, and as we end, end 2023, uh, you have the final upfront section, which I'm appreciative of. So I think we should get right to it. Uh, what is your topic for the promo upfront section of episode number 182 of the promo upfront podcast, which you and I are currently recording and co-hosting. And we're going to drop later this week to the entire promotional products industry as we do every single Friday. So if you could go ahead and stop wasting time and go ahead and get to that uh, first topic, I sure would appreciate it. And I know our listeners would as well. So if you could go ahead and get to that. Yeah, I absolutely happy to. Um, I guess I'm going to give you a multiple choice. So you want to talk supply chain or you want to talk trade show season? 
Let's go supply chain, Kirby. Okay. All right. Cool. So I don't know if you've been paying attention to this, but uh, because of challenges with wars and all this sort of thing, yep. the supply chain is a little, you know, iffy right now again. Right. Um, shipping giant, um, I, I'm not going to say this name right, Maersk is kicking operations. No, you did. I think, I, I believe you did say that correctly, not okay. to interrupt I you. I feel good about that. Yeah. They're kicking operations back into gear into the Red Sea. If you haven't been paying attention, um, there have been some challenges with going through there because yeah. of uh, things being hijacked. But uh, they've announced that several dozen container vessels are going to pass through the Suez Canal in the Red Sea in the coming days and weeks. Apparently, in reading a little bit about the article, the U.S. has had uh, uh, some impact in trying to add protections and I'm sure investments or whatever. Um, you know, we mm -hmm. just lived through. Um, a real yeah. challenge with just getting containers in and getting them here and all these different supply chain issues. When I see this, I get real tense. And and I would be, I was curious to know what your take was. I mean, it's, I guess the good news is they're starting to ramp them up through the, the, the Suez Canal again. But is do you think that I should relax or I should be on high alert? Kirby, I don't think you should ever relax. I want you on high alert at all times. I think it's important not only for our relationship, but honestly, the entire industry needs you on high alert. Your head needs to be on a swivel at all times of the day. Uh, kidding aside, yeah, kidding aside, no, I don't think it's time to relax. I, I think, you know, one thing COVID showed us and the more distance we get from, I call it COVID, it's really a pandemic, the more distance we get from the actual pandemic, you know, the more we're able to look back and see how life really did change in a certain, in, in a lot of ways, uh, small, large, you, you name it. I think the biggest realization that we all had, especially in our industry, is the supply chain is really held together with duct tape and bailing wire. And it is extraordinarily fragile. And the slightest uh, uh, conflict, the, the slightest shift in uh, port closures sends the entire thing into chaos. Now, how much of that is the news and how much they love to panic and, and create mm -hmm. panic in, in the viewership? That I don't know. I think it's smart to always realize that the supply chain is fragile. And you know we, we depend on foreign entities for our products and merchandise. And because of that, we're kind of at you know the whims of, of those, you know, how are the winds blowing in the Middle East mm -hmm. at, the, at a given moment rate? Right. You know, it's just like oil prices, right? The prices at the gas pump are directly affected by conflicts in the Middle East or a group of, of people who sit around in, in, in OPEC and decide, we're going to cut production. I, yeah. That's the world we live in. So I think you should be on alert and just, okay, you know, it's just going to be unstable for a while, whatever that means. Yeah. I, I, I So it makes me tense, as I mentioned, but I think one of the things that when it comes to supply chain, rather than for me rather than being completely tense all of the time one of the gifts right. it did give me the pandemic and the supply chain challenges is awareness yep. like if i'm being yep. honest this was just not something that was on my radar at all because i didn't do a lot of sure. importing like chinese new year uh, you know years ago was a brand, you know like a brand new concept to me i wasn't on, you know i wasn't paying attention to it so i think that the gift that the pandemic and these challenges gave me was just awareness now what i don't want to do is become that media company that is uh, looking for headlines with my clients you know i've talked about us as you know we are media companies and so Absolutely. one of the things i think you've taught me is to be proactive in my communication so that when there is an issue you know that i might write a blog about it or i might write an email about it and be ahead of it so that i could be a true partner but I think that this is one where I'm not doing that yet because I don't want to be an alarmist either, right? So so that's yeah. why it's like, it, I love that I'm paying more attention to it. I'm a little bit more informed and I'm a little bit more aware, but I don't want to be sensationalizing it either. I, I agree. You don't want to hit the panic button when there's no reason to hit the panic button. And, and exactly what you said, sometimes it, it's necessary to go to clients and say, you need this on your radar. Right. If you've got something happening in, in May or June, you need to order now. I'm not sure we're there yet, but I think paying attention to it makes a lot of sense. And like I said uh, earlier, I don't know how much of it's, I don't want to say sensationalized by the media, because I'm not sure that's fair, but I think it's been magnified. Uh, sure. And so I don't, I don't know. Again, I, I think we've talked about this before. I feel bad for your kids, my kids, same generation, 
not being able to grow up knowing that the news they're getting is accurate. Right. Um, everybody's got an agenda now. There's no Walter Cronkite, the most trusted man in America. And and that's just an is. I, it, no, I'm not going to say, you know, I'm not going to go off on a Blame tangent, on it, but yeah. it's, a, it's a reality now. The news you get is designed to get ratings. So, right. you know, I don't, but it is, it seems like it's magnified right now. But I agree with you. You don't want to be an alarmist. You don't want to go to your clients and hit the panic button because you can only go to that well so many times. And right. you've already done it because there was a reason to be proactive. Right. But by the same token, whenever you have an opportunity to go to a client, whether it's good news, bad news, you saw a clipping in an online magazine or newspaper or whatever, whenever you have an opportunity to communicate to a client and it's not trying to sell them something, no, I agree always a good thing to do. Yeah. Always yeah. a good thing to do. Yeah. Love it. Cool. You know what? Yeah, you know what else is a good thing to do, Kirby. What's um, that? I think we, I think we both realize that the end of the year is here. We're about to enter twenty twenty four, and so we don't need. We're gonna look back, maybe part of this podcast, but now it's almost time to look forward. Mm. And, and I'm gonna go even further now, right now, this very second. Now is the time to decide how you're going to amp up your sales in the coming year. And thankfully, Amp from our good pals over at Promo Pulse is here to do exactly that. In five minutes, you can create content content from suppliers you choose. You can set it and forget it all in five minutes and while you watch those inquiries come in. There's no easier way to expand your marketing reach than with AMP from Promo, Promo Pulse. Learn more at promopulse.io. All right, Kirby. Let's talk about some biggest marketing fails of 2023 as we look back a little bit before we go to 2024. Okay, that sounds fun. I always, I always love this, yeah. So- I did a little research in my vast amounts of spare time. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about, I, I thought we'd look at three of the biggest marketing fails. I believe you're familiar with all of them. Okay. Um, but we'll go over them briefly just to make sure people know. But then let's talk about the lessons maybe we can learn from the marketing fails. Okay. Okay. That sounds fun. So I'm th as you would say, I'm throwing this at you. So advantage me because I know the topic. I'm excited. The first one is... Bud Light and their LGBTQ partnership with the influencer and then the subsequent boycott. I almost think both of those were marketing fails. The actual uh, Bud Light uh, uh, partnering with LGBTQ influencer, uh, mm -hmm. mainly because they didn't stand behind it. They they right. waffled um, and they were not. So I think the let, uh, uh, and then I, I think the boycott was also just as disingenuous. It was all mm -hmm. weird. You know, Kid Rock blowing up mm -hmm. cans of Bud Light and then find out that he's serving it in his bar in downtown Nashville at the same time. But I think the lesson here, and I'd like your opinion on this, is you need to be authentic with your partnerships. Bud Light was clearly not. Bud Light was truly, tr clearly trying to, to uh, grasp onto a movement that clearly as an organization they aren't comfortable with. And the lack of authenticity just bled through because they backtracked so, so quickly. Yeah. Uh, so it's funny. It's funny how fast a year goes. Cause I was like, that could have been, you know, 20 2021 yeah. for all I know, but okay. So yes, yeah. that was obviously a big marketing fail. Ironically, they didn't really do this in a big way. It was a kind of a, an, you know, made a couple. No, of it was a quietly. Yeah. Um, Very quiet. But so number one, the lesson for me is know your audience. Right. I mean, the folks who are drinking Bud Light clearly are not uh, yeah. supporters of that movement. But if you do do something like this, and as you said, it is authentically you be willing yeah. to say F you be willing to yeah. double down, be willing to because yeah. I, I to your point, like <clears throat> Bud Light was. They, again, they were comparable to their beer. It was kind of flavorless yep. and tasteless. And so I, yeah. I just. Yeah, that there was a bunch to learn from that one. Um, and by the way, really annoying. The cancel yeah. culture can go suck it. Yeah, in, in and all ways. <laughs> uh, so we we have, we have no grace for anybody making any the slightest misstep. Yeah. Uh, apparently, we are all def we're all defined by the, our our mistakes now. And also, Bud Light needs to bring back Spuds McKenzie. All right, second marketing fail of 2023, Kirby X formerly known as Twitter, has lost <laughs> so many advertisers, it's not even funny. Now, brands are pulling out of X uh, due to concerns of Elon Musk, who now owns uh, X, his public tirades, and his very hateful and very extremist content. To those advertisers he left, Elon Musk very famously said, go truck yourselves, except he didn't use the word truck. Mm -hmm. um, so... 
I, I mean, you, he really I said that. He really said that. Like there's video yeah. of it. It's not like fake go, news. Go F yourselves. Yeah. yeah. So I have a lesson here. Do you want to share a lesson that you can think of or do you want me to go ahead and give you mine? You go first because I got a train coming through. All right. Train kept rolling all night long, as Aerosmith once said. I think the lesson here is, you know, they did the rebrand from Twitter to X. And that's fine. I mean, anybody can go through a rebrand and, and it's okay. But that's going to backfire if your brand's core values shift so violently and so quickly. And that's clearly what happened here. The culture of Twitter that Elon Musk bought is a direct 180 from what that culture is now. And that's clear in terms of, you know, I'm still on X. I'm kind of debating to get off it because I really don't use it very much anymore because I see things popping up in my feed that I don't subscribe to. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I, an agenda is being pushed on me and I never felt that before. Um, and and not, not even to mention the hateful rhetoric of the owner, which I, I find deplorable and, and that's being kind. But, you know, I think the lesson is if you're if you're going to rebrand, you can't just shift so violently away from your core values and who you are or else you're going to you're going to make a mess of things. Yeah, um, I guess the lesson and this is something you, let's face it at Brandivate, you do this for clients. Yeah. You're very good at this. I do. Uh, so um, but doing it, it felt like this was such, you talked about it being sort of violent shift from a culture perspective. It yeah. feels like everything that has happened at Twitter slash X, you know, that company X that everybody yeah. still calls Twitter. And if you, if you type in yeah. Twitter, you go still go to X. It, it oh, is yeah. just the most horse piss rebrand of all time because it wasn't thought out at oh, yeah. all. I mean, we're going to yeah. put up the X on the building and we're going to take it down. Like it is like, literally it should be called restart because everything they've done, they've started and restarted because it, it feels like this it's, is all just, uh, what's the frame of consciousness from Elon Musk. It's a stream, I was about yeah. to say, a stream of consciousness so, rebrand is what yeah, it you is. You can't yeah. do a rebrand well when you just go like this and snap your fingers and hope it's great. Um, and again, that's the kind yeah. of thing that you work with clients to to, I do. to do in a thoughtful way. So yeah, this one was, <laughs> this one sucked out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a bit tough. All right, number three, Kirby. This one you may not be as familiar with. I was not, but uh, let's talk about it anyway. Who? What's going to stop us from giving strong opinions on things we don't know about? <laughs> All right. So Target uh, had some pride themed clothing, yes. and then they pulled it. Yep. Uh, basically, because uh, what what Target said was is what they said. I'm not saying this. I don't want to get yelled at. It's Christmas and the holidays. Yep. Quote. Right-wing threats impacting team members' well-being at work caused Target to pull that merchandise. Now, I think the lesson here is they didn't stay committed to their brand values, which is especially when it comes to supporting marginalized communities. So retreating made Target appear to abandon their values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think actually uh, disenfranchised their associates and employees instead of like we talked a little bit earlier it's very similar to the Bud Light one in my mind you didn't double down on it you if you believe in it you believe in it you can't just flip-flop all the time yeah I think it goes to that we you know it's funny we've been talking about this for years the idea of chasing trends um and I think uh businesses do this sometimes where it's like it it is fashionable to be a fan of a certain community until it's not um right like and so I, I think understanding that the world we live in, in when we're talking about lessons, right, for 2024, yep. if you're going to take yep. any sort of stand on any sort of issue, you're going to piss people off. The mm -hmm. end, full stop, right? So yep. understanding that in advance of it is imperative because then you can fully say, oh, yeah, we knew that was coming and yeah. we're going to do it anyway. Um, and it's, again, I, I think of Southwest, yeah. um, I think they're, they're, if I read right, um, if I, if I didn't, I apologize, but I think yeah. he may have passed the, the, the original founder of Southwest. Yeah. Um, Herb Kelleher. He yeah. passed a while ago. Yep. Yeah. So, but he talked about, you know, that, that, um, there was like a letter of a frequent flyer that, that they, this woman kept sending complaint letters and right. about, you know, that the, the, the snacks weren't good enough and the seats weren't this and the blah, blah, blah. And it finally made its way to his desk and he wrote a yeah. letter back and said, yeah. dear Ann Smith, we really appreciate your business. We will miss you. Yeah. <laughs> the end. Yeah. Like, it's There's, like, I, and, and so few brands have the courage to do that. And so that's what I see. You know, it, in a culture today, it, it, 
I think for years and decades, you could get away with a product. This is what we're selling. This It's not about who we are and all that. It's about this product that we have that nobody else has. I think what we're really seeing is this acceleration of it's not what you sell, it's what you stand for. And you have to, to your point, I agree. You are going to, if you do things the right way, you are going to have people that are absolutely supporters of you, that are fans of yours, and you're going to absolutely make some uh, people upset and maybe even have some enemies. And that's okay. That's something you have to get comfortable with because if you think the global you, company, individual, if you think you're everybody's cup of tea, I guarantee you you're nobody's cup of tea. So you have to stand for something. Uh, and when you when you flip-flop like that, like what Target did, I wouldn't, if, if I am a part of a marginalized community and I work at Target, I don't know how comfortable I feel with that personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. I like All that. right, Kirby, good stuff. Do you have another topic for us, for us to talk about? Yeah, today okay. on yeah, the I'll podcast? Make, <laughs> I'll make this one quick, I think. But um, okay. I don't know if you've seen this. There's a viral TikTok trend that's actually making wearable tech kind of cool again. Um, nope, I did so not know this. I don't might. tick and I, I don't talk. I, apparently it's... The, the trend is that uh, folks are wearing Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses, um, okay. usually while lip syncing a song or whatever. And so essentially, I don't know, this is the part you might be familiar with, is that, that Meta glasses have, uh, have partnered with Ray-Ban and the $300 tech looks almost identical to a normal pair of Ray-Bans, okay? But there's a small camera okay. in the upper corners of the frames that flash when taking a high quality photo or pulse yep. when recording, right? Um, okay. And you can give it voice commands. <laughs> um, um, so Meta is banking on them to do much more. I am mm -hmm. very interested in this. Um, they're, they're talking about maybe it could translate languages in real time for people who wear. I'm totally fascinated by that, by the way. Um, come up with funny photos, help pick out clothes, all kinds of things yeah. in the future. I'm I'll start by asking you what your thought is about wearable tech. Is that something like a, a pair of Ray-Bans like this? Let's say you like the glasses. Is yeah. this something that you yeah. would invest in or is that a no for you, dog? I, I, I Well, Randy Jackson, it's not necessarily <laughs> a no for me, dog. Uh, I, I think I want to know what more about it. It, it. Here's the thing. For me, I'm at the, the age where I don't need the newest. I don't need the, the flashiest. But if it's useful, absolutely. Or it applies to my life, yeah, I'm interested in that. So mm -hmm. I'm at a point where when I see new technology, I look at it with a more discerning eye. Mm -hmm. um, I, is, if it's useful, um, like one of the applications you said, possibly of uh, these Ray-Ban glasses are uh, translating uh, foreign languages in real time, I could see that being useful. But then I look on the other side and all this tech sometimes is so distracting. I mean, we have an entire society of what I call oblivious. Yeah. They're oblivious idiots because they walk <laughs> around either staring at their smartphones or they've stared at their smartphones so often they don't realize they're walking in the middle of a parking lot, even though they're not on their phone. So we have, I, I, we have so many distractions. I'm wary of more distractions. Right. But I'm interested. You know, we tried this before with Google Glasses. I think that's yep. what they're called, right? Yep. Google, Google Glass, Glass, I think. Yep. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know what those were purported to do other than fail, which it did. Um, so I'm interested in this. I just don't know. I don't know the applications yet. So yeah. I, I will plead ignorance here. But yes, we do live in a world of oblivious. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I'm fascinated by it. I think I am interested in trying it out. Um, but so as is the case with so much technology right now, I feel yeah. like each one of these is a necessary step to getting to something mm -hmm. that's cooler. Um, like, like VR right agree. now feels like a necessary step to get, and sorry, Nick Latour, we need to work on your, uh, <laughs> your being able to walk and, and do VR at the same time. Um, but yeah, th they're a necessary uh, step to get to the place where we're both like, oh man, that's awesome. Yeah. And so I think we'll go through some things. This seems closer than what Google Glass was, right? Because there's at least a yeah. fashion component, whatever. So I'm interested in checking them out. Um, Ray-Ban's also, I think it's Ray-Ban, is also the mm -hmm. ones that have the the headphones sort of built into, and I'm like, oh, okay, all of a sudden you can make something that looks pretty standard into a pretty immersive thing. So I'm fascinated yeah. by it. No, I, I think I'm, I'm closer to fascination than I am adoption. That's for sure. Okay. And, yeah. you know, we, we are definitely in, you know, anytime there's new technology, the first few are always a little wonky. 
Right. Right. Exactly. And, and so you look at Google Glass, Google Glass had to be invented and fail for probably this Ray-Ban uh, next mm -hmm. iteration of it. And maybe this will succeed. Maybe it won't. Who, who knows? Cool. Yeah, that was, All that, right. that was interesting. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So you have a choice of, 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 of topics, Kirby. I've got a topic in my left hand right here, just ready to go. But yet I have a topic in my right hand right over here, ready to go. I need you to pick right or left, Kirby, right or left. I'm going to go right. Wrong. Let's go left. All right. <laughs> you brought back something last week that I had neglected oh. for a while in top three, bottom three. <laughs> so as we head into uh, the weekend in New Year's Eve, I have taken it upon myself okay. to do hours of research. And we're going to talk about top three, bottom three, New Year's Eve foods. Okay. You know, it's generally generally uh, an evening where people kind of eat all evening uh get you know have a couple cocktails as they're ready to ring in the new year so yep. let's start with the top three kirby okay the number three uh top three uh new year's eve food shrimp cocktail you can't go wrong with a cold yep. shrimp cocktail uh easy for people to pick up by the tail dip it dip dip the uh, meat of said shrimp into some sort of cocktail sauce Love it. And you eat it and then discard of said tail. Love the shrimp cocktail. I have no issue with that. I think it's it's actually, although it is the one that you, if not prepared exactly right, can start New Year's Day really wrong. But I'm oh, a fan. No question. Okay. Number two, and this almost really was number one. Okay. But number two, deviled eggs. Mm. Man, I love me some deviled eggs. Again, finger food. You can pick it up. You graze with it, and it's got all sorts of protein in it. So it's, I wouldn't say it's healthy because it's got a lot of mayonnaise in it, and it better have Duke's mayonnaise if you know what you're doing. But it, it, I'm a big fan of the uh, deviled egg, especially when you chop up some jalapenos, put it in there, maybe top it off with a little bit of bacon, Kirby. Yeah, what did you say last week that I'm trying really hard to respect your opinion and it's or your feelings and it's not working out that great? Correct. Deviled eggs are gross. Correct. Man. Those are the nastiest oh. things on earth. I'm, I'm, that's, no. A no. that's a no for me, Doug. No. Okay, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> All right, the number one, the top, the top food to have at New Year's Eve this year, a charcuterie board, a proper charcuterie board. Okay. Many uh, spiced and smoked meats, cheeses, perhaps some fruit. Absolutely. Can't go wrong with our charcuterie, charcuterie board. Yeah, I got no issue with that because you can actually build in a little bit of healthy snacks in there. And uh, yeah. we actually had one for a holiday party where Amy made it into a Christmas tree. You can be pretty creative oh, nice. with it. So I, 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 yeah, I'll go with that. I'm not sure I'd go number one, but all right. I smell what right. you're stepping in. Now, whoa. All right. Let's talk about our bottom three worst foods for New Year's Eve. Okay. Number three, the mini quiche. These things you buy in bulk at Costco, they're, they taste like nothing. Mm -hmm. They're awful. No, 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 never, 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 no, no, no. Uh, there's a book that I read, and I'm not saying this. Remember how you said earlier, I'm not trying to be mad uh, or to get people mad at me, but there was a book that said, real men don't eat quiche. Yeah, I've yeah. kind of subscribed to that. So that's a I no don't mind me. I don't mind quiche, but not those little frozen varieties. Those are nasty. They nasty. All right, number two. This is going to be extraordinarily controversial, right. and I'm prepared to take on all comers. Okay. Come fight me, bro. Number two, worst food to have at New Year's Eve, a vegetable platter. I don't want a lot of carrots, broccoli, cauliflower. Your diet starts tomorrow. This is New Year's Eve. You don't need to be having vegetables like that on New Year's Eve. No. Absolutely not. And plus, it's lazy. You bring that to a party, what'd you do? Stop at Kroger on the way over and grab some sort of plastic thing with a big dollop of ranch dressing in the middle? Disgusting. Be embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for you. See, it's funny that you say that because I think when I think of a charcuterie board, I think that that sort yeah. of food is involved, right? When I said that there's yeah. some healthiness to it, that the charcuterie boards I've seen might have some of the smoked meats and stuff like that, but they'll have carrots and lettuce or no. excuse me, celery for that. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm i probably not going to fight you because I don't care that much. I thought it was a pretty high yeah. choice. Oh, anyway. I care. <laughs> yeah. But uh, whatever. <laughs> All right. The number one worst food to have at your New Year's Eve gathering this year, tortilla 
pinwheels. Nothing says lazy like deli meat and cream cheese wrapped up in a tortilla. These things are gross. They're disgusting. Nobody likes them. And the worst part is there's so many left over at the end of the night. Someone is always going to say, let's save some. We'll have them tomorrow for lunch. And you never do. They just sit in your fridge getting <laughs> even more disgusting, even though that's really not possible. I don't even know what the hell you're talking about. So that's, I mean, that's, so apparently none of my friends are bringing those over on New Year's Eve. So oh, good. kudos, my friends. Kudos to your friends. Kudos <laughs> to your friends. All right, those are the top three, bottom three. We'd love to hear what your top three, bottom three is for New Year's Eve foods. But here's what we're going to do now. Kirby, okay. time for football picks for PPEF. Yep. Got some big games this week. Last week, we both went three and three. Okay. I am one behind you. You are at 56 and 32. I am at 55 and 33. We've got some big games. Are you ready, sir? These are important bowl games. These are meaningful bowl games and more playoff implications for the National Foosball League. Yeah, I I guess I'm ready, but I, we, you and I were talking before we started recording, and I want to give you credit. Like, you're the person who comes up with the games every week to pick, but you're also the person who tallies, and I give this zero thought really before, yeah. but definitely after. So you could tell me that you were up by 100, and I would have no recollection. So... Kudos to your integrity. Oh, no problem. And I smell a big comeback for me this week, no matter what happens. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the Peach Bowl, Kirby. Number six, Georgia versus the disenfranchised number five, Florida State. Who do you got? Um. Yeah, I think I think ultimately um, – this will be, this is a tough one for me to pick because I'm curious to know, you know, um, a lot of times a, um, mm -hmm. a, when you tell really, really good athletes that they suck for an extended period mm -hmm. of time, they tend to show up well, they tend to prepare well, they tend mm -hmm. to, which is why I would lean Florida state. But ultimately I have picked Georgia every single time they've been on the board and they've let me down one time. I, I just still think yeah. they're really good. So I'm going to go Georgia. Well, they're not going to let you down this time because Florida State's a joke. Um, I, I don't like what the playoff committee did in terms of leaving them out, but because they did leave them out, yeah, congrats, it will make you get for Georgia. better it will it will, <laughs> will make better it will make for better better bowl games. But uh they're 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 gonna get their asses blown. I, uh, as a side uh, note, they're, they're, as a yeah. side note, I have said to several Florida State fans that if it were me and I were in the promotional products world and they do beat Georgia then yeah. I would be I would be making completely unlicensed national championship gear oh, yeah. to sell because it oh, is yeah. it, it, they they have a claim if they win. Yeah. Oh, absolutely they do. It's just, you know, a very flawed system. All right. So we both picked Georgia on that one. And now we go to the semifinal games. Number four, Alabama versus Michigan in the Rose Bowl, Kirby in the Rose Bowl. Who do you got? Oh, I hate this game so much. Uh, so, um, can both teams lose? Yeah, I, it's four days. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the like literally. I hadn't made up my mind when you were yeah. even talking about this. So we think about Alabama beating Georgia, mm -hmm. and this is the mm -hmm. definition of recency biased because they for, mm -hmm. we forget what they looked like at Auburn the week before, um, and they should yep. have lost that game. I'm gonna. Yep. I think both will get the best versions of both. I'm going to go with the Big Ten. Wow! Wow! Going for the going for the khaki panted Harbaugh. Mm, um, I hate that so. All much. right. Yeah, I know. I'm I am reluctantly going to pick Alabama here. I just don't see, and and this is the SEC bias I have, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I do. I'll own it. I do think that style of football tends to certainly be more entertaining than big 10 football. I don't think there's even, I don't think even you would argue that better is maybe the where we might disagree. Um, I do think that uh, I do think Alabama is going to pull it. I think it's gonna be a close game. It could go either way. All right. Texas number three at the or versus the Washington Huskies. Number two in the sugar bowl. Who do you got? These are tough. These are, and again, good they games. That's, uh, so I, I think my natural instinct is to pick Texas in this. Um, okay. I just feel like they've got better players, but man, yeah. Washington continues to they continue to not lose. Um, right. I'll go Texas. 
All right, so you've got the Sarkeesians, the fighting Sarkeesians. I will watch this game only to hate watch Texas. Um, I want Texas to lose in, as I generally say, I want them to lose in a, a generation-defining way. I want them to lose on a last-minute quirky play when they thought they had the game in hand, just so I can pause my DVR and actually see where people's hearts get really broken because they're wearing burnt orange. So I am rooting for the very unfortunately named Michael Penix Jr. and the uh, uh, Washington Huskies. All right, Kirby. Good, good, good. Let's go to the pros. We have a Saturday night, Monday night football game. Try to wrap your head around that. Um, Detroit Lions go into Dallas to play the uh, two-time, uh, two two losses in a row Dallas football Cowboys. Who do you got, Kirby? Um, so you'd said it was where? It's uh, in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And Detroit has just wrapped up their uh Division, I believe. Division. So I, I view a little bit of a letdown there. It's at Dallas. I think Dallas needs to rebound. I think they will. Cowboys. Yeah, I think Cowboys win. Um, they're inducting Jimmy Johnson into the Ring of Honor finally. Uh, I think, you know, they had every opportunity to win that game uh, in, in Miami. Just uh, a couple, yeah. you know, I'm not one to blame officials, but there were some uh, questionable yeah. non-calls there. But uh, uh, I think Dallas pulls it together. Uh, speaking of the Miami Dolphins, Miami goes into Baltimore to play the Ravens. Mm, yeah. I'll tell you, I think you might see a little letdown on the Dolphins as well. The Ravens are starting to win me over. They continue to look good. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going Ravens. Yeah, I go for the Raven here too. I, I don't know if it's a letdown. I don't think Miami is as good as everybody thinks. Um, Dallas absolutely had their number last week. Uh, you had a, they drove the ball down, fumbled the ball at the half yard line. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, Dallas had every opportunity to win that game. And I'm not even sold on Dallas being uh, anything more than a, a good, a very good team right now. I don't think they're great either. I think Baltimore takes care of business at home against the Dolphin. All right. This is the toughest one to pick, I think. Cincinnati at Kansas City. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's that one. This, this one isn't that hard for me to pick. This was the easiest one. Um, I think that this goes to the idea when you get really good athletes and tell them that they suck for an extended period of time. Yep. Um, they tend to respond really well. And I feel like Kansas city feels like it's Kansas city against the world. <clears throat> and I don't, I'm not sure Cincinnati is as good. And yep. so I'm going Kansas city on this one. Yeah. Here, here's my thought on it, Kirby. Um, I can never root against anything Taylor Swift is associated with as right. a card carrying Swifty. Yeah. Got to go with the Kansas City Chiefs here. I'd be foolish if yeah. I didn't. So I'm also going with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. But I'm also going to do something else, Kirby. I'm going to go to trade shows here yeah. in a few weeks. I'm excited about that. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm not checking into the hotel. I'm not going to see the sphere when I get to Vegas. I'm not even going to go have a fine meal at Nobu. No, I'm heading right over to the Logo Mats booth. And that's going to be number 2333. Uh, 2333 at Expo. I'm going to go there. I don't care if they set up or not. I'm going to sit my ass there and wait until they set up because I want to see those amazing display mats that are bold and colorful and attract all manner of attention. And if I were going to ASR Orlando, I wouldn't go to Disney World. I wouldn't go to Universal Studios. I'd go right to booth number 921 to see logo mats. That's how important this year is to me i'm gonna kick it off with logo mats and if you don't do the same <laughs> you're in for a tough year so you're going to a trade show orlando booth number 921 expo booth 2333 see miles wadsworth and his crew they're going to show you how really what a great sales tool uh mats are branded mats are for you and your clients and uh, you won't be sorry you did kirby as always happy new year always fun to do uh, podcast with you. We did 52 of them this year. Let's run it back in 2024. Let's do it.